Hey everybody, um, my name is Joel Pulliam, and um, I'm here with the First and Fifteenth. Uh, for those who don't know, the First they came from like the First Amendment, the right to free speech, and the Fifteenth, Fifteenth Amendment, the right to uh, vote. But I just wanted to to get something off my chest. Um, I talked about it on my podcast a little bit, but I just wanted to bring it to YouTube. Uh, I I don't feel like this. I as a black man in this country, I, these last, honestly, these last few years have been very, very frustrating for me. Um, I was actually talking to my family the other day about, um, how little progress I felt that we've had since George Floyd and, you know, his death and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, uh, just the summer protests of 2020, how I felt like, and I still feel that white America has abandoned us. And that includes a lot of politicians, too. Um, it, it leads you to constantly ask the question, you know, where are you now? You know, where are the, the, the so-called uh, allies, right? Where are the people who said that they were down and they were trying to amplify black voices? Because over the, especially over these past few months, you've seen an acceleration uh, when it when it comes to like the fight against black people, whether it's uh, uh, you see a country song that's blatantly racist. And I don't care what anyone says. Jason Aldean's song is being shooting to number one now this week. You know, it's number one in the billboard charts. Uh, you see in Florida with Ron DeSantis in the school board uh, trying to act as if black people gained something from slavery. You see with affirmative action, you see with uh, uh, after the affirmative action decision and it being repealed, you, you start to see, you know, companies firing diversity chiefs right away. And again, I ask, where are you now? You know, I'm brought back to the summer of 2020 um, and I've told this story. Uh, me and my brother, we were uh, actually uh, we were at a protest and was walking down like a, a street in a predominantly white like neighborhood you know the suburbs and i remember seeing all these signs seeing you know you know black lives matter you know we love you guys you know justice for george floyd and all this which was great you know black squares and everything and i just remember looking at my brother and asking him you know kind of like quite like like how how real do you think this is basically you know because i kept thinking to myself like okay you're, you're with us now but until when and you even start to see bits of it you know come election time right uh uh november when uh jacob blake uh in wisconsin uh he shot in the back and i remember you know we thought it was gonna be you know people were gonna say something about it in the streets you know and i remember joe biden who you know uh i thought he had been good up until that point uh, in terms of handling uh, Black Lives Matter and situations like that, uh, th he makes a statement and like the first thing he talks about is, you know, hey, let's not destroy property and, you know, peace and all this. And I'm like, oh, there we go again. You know, it seemed like, OK, it's 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 we're walking back. And I, you know what? And I'm going to be honest with everyone. I I worked for Joe Biden's campaign in South Carolina. So it's not like I. I but I'm going to be honest always and speak up for my people. And that matters more than any campaign or any politician. I'm always going to tell the truth for my people and for any people that I feel from that are marginalized from any group. And so I'm going to be honest there that he, he dropped the ball. And it was kind of the start of, of that. Uh oh, they were cool with us then. But now you know, we're going back to normal. You know, you even saw it in polling where people a year later, like it was, uh, there was a big chunk cut out of the support of Black Lives Matter a year later, at least from white people. And so you start to see this is American history, whether it's, you see with civil rights, the 60s, we make the Voting Rights Act, we make changes, you know, we, we, we make great progress, the Voting Rights Act, uh, 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 the Civil Rights Act, you know, even like Fair Housing Act. Then you get the, 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 the election of 68, the silent majority. You know, Hubert Humphrey loses to Richard Nixon. You see Richard Nixon use the Southern strategy in 72 to beat McGovern. And then Republicans from Reagan to H.W. Bush, they, they run things for the next 25 years. 
And so we've seen this progress. We saw it in 08. We saw a, a Barack Obama. Every We were, man, I thought, you know, the rainbows and the o- ocean was going to part and, you know, the lion and the lamb. And, and it was going to be, you know, peace and harmony on earth. And we were all for that one night. We were like, oh, man, everything is perfect. And then white people were like, nah, we're not going to let that black president get everything he wants done. And you start to see that white lash. And it culminates in 2016 with people electing someone who is unfit for the office who is the complete opposite of Barack Obama. Um, and, 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 and the main point of why he's unqualified is his heart. And so, so I've, we've seen it before and we see it now. I remember, you know, uh, a state of a union address and we start to, to, uh, we're making good points. And then out of nowhere, it's like, oh, but we're going to fund police. And I'm thinking to myself, but we, you ran on, you know, we told people as a party that, you know, we were going to reform police. And I don't think giving them more money is a part of that solution. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, again, I, I don't need training to know not to, 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 to sit on someone's neck for five, six, seven minutes. I don't need training to know not to shoot someone in the back. That's just as a human being. And so those are, are the things that, that alarm me. Like we still have pe- people being killed by police. You know what I mean? Like Tyree Nichols beat to death by five officers, even where, you know, I'm now fair fit facts, you know, Virginia. There's this guy named uh, uh, Timothy Johnson. Uh, He was shot in the back because they said he stole some sunglasses. Right. And it took us practically raising hell for for them to even uh, uh, bring it before a grand jury. And then that didn't work because the police were the only ones allowed to give evidence. And so we had to do it again. And now they got a second grand jury, you know, and, and, and I think sometimes we see things through the prism of, of, of TV and elections. But when you talk to like I talked to the mother, Timothy Johnson, you see the real life effects of us not making progress like we need to. You know, I, I think of even in my home state of South Carolina, right, is where I grew up. I see the lack of progress made. I see the CRT, you know. Uh, anti-CRT, anti-black history, uh, things being passed in South Carolina legislature. You know what I'm saying? And, and it breaks your heart because we did promise people things. And I feel like this country owes us that. I feel like it owes us reparations. I feel like it owes us for, for our ancestors. It owes us for what we go through now. And so I, I need to get this off my chest because I want to challenge people. Challenge white people who are listening to to not always think of yourself as the main character in the story of America and to look to, to help build other people. It's not enough just to be against injustice. Your lifestyle has to be. I want to tear down the systems that uphold injustice. You can't say that, oh, I care about George Floyd, but hey, let's give, you know, uh, police more money. And then if, if someone complains, hey, hey, be quiet, be quiet, shut up, shut up. Then you really weren't down like that. And I'm warning people because I've talked about it in other videos. I feel like people are underestimating the desperation people have. They're underestimating the apathy people have towards government, towards it ever working for them. And they overestimate the patience that people have. It's not 2020 anymore for a lot of people. Look, I'm going to vote for Joe Biden because it's going to be Biden and Trump come 2024. But I can't promise like... There'll be, there could be people who sit out and that's the danger, right? Is that, you know, and I'm only doing it because, you know, we can't have Donald Trump again, but for a lot of people, it's hell. It's been hell no matter what. And it's not just, you know, and I'm not like, oh, I'm putting it all on Joe Biden. It's an America thing. And we've always done this in America. We will we will make progress, but when the silent majority, the white working class, they complain about something, we pull back. We won't go all the way. And then you wonder why people don't believe in a system. It's never worked for them. And so, like, even businesses, you, you, you heard businesses, they said, hey, you know, we're down with you guys. We're going to, we're going to, you know, inclusion. We're going to have more diversity. And they went back on every single promise. Even people on the side of good, I'm going to be honest, even when it comes to us, those on the side of good who want, you know, righteousness, we, we haven't had the same intensity. 
let me tell you, like the 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 evils of this world, like the bad people, they are always working. You know, racism is always working 24 seven. So what are we going to do about it? And so, yeah, I'm going to challenge people. I'm going to challenge white listeners, white Americans. Like even there are people that I worked with, people that that I, I call friends that, oh, they were hyped three years ago. Now, when black people get killed, because they still get killed by police, like I'm saying. And they're nowhere to be found. There's nothing said about it. And I'm just I can't stress it enough. Next year is not 2020. So you have to make inroads with with black people, um, those marginalized people without college degrees, you know, the black Latino people without college degrees, young people, because if you look at the polling, there has been a bit of of uh, eating away of support for Joe Biden. And and I just I'm and I'm going to speak the truth. You know, the team I work with in, in South Carolina I felt like we really did hard work to bring a victory towards the campaign. You know, I I feel like it was our hard work and the team's hard work and from the top to the bottom in South Carolina that that state, without that state, Joe Biden wouldn't be president. So I think you owe black people for putting you in the White House. You owe black people who are on your team to to really step up when it comes to this. And before people get at me and they will say, oh, well, we don't have the numbers. I am not dumb or ignorant towards how government works. I realize that you do not have the numbers right now. But I think of abortion. We don't have the numbers for that right now. The Supreme Court's overturned it. And until you expand it, hello, it, they're just going to keep overturning even if, even if you passed, even if you codified it. They would still strike it down. So the question is now, like if you can can speak up about that and rightfully so speak up when it come on that because you think oh it'll, it'll motivate people to come to the polls how come we haven't spoken up more about police how come we haven't spoken up more about voting rights that have been gutted since 2013 with Shelby versus Holder how come we haven't i go back to LBJ after JFK's death it's not like LBJ has he has the numbers when it comes to party, but obviously with Dixiecrats and everything, everyone who was a Democrat was not going to vote for a civil rights bill or a voting rights bill. He had to – him and King and the activists, it's a symbiotic relationship to, to garner America's attention and their hearts towards a voting rights act, towards a civil rights act. That is what the bully pulpit is for. I think people, they, will not, they, they won't get mad that – Joe Biden didn't pass things because we understand, you know, 50-50 splits in it. You know, you're going to have to kill the filibuster and all that. But you got to at least show people that you're trying just from an optic standpoint, a moral standpoint. And even when it comes to the filibuster, I would run off of saying I'm going to kill the filibuster because there is no other way to get this done when it comes to voting rights, when it comes to, to, to civil rights, when it comes to police reform, when it, even when it comes to, to immigration, to abortion, there's no other way unless you strike down the filibuster. I just feel like these are the times where, where great leaders step up. And I'm warning people that there's apathy in a lot of, of marginalized communities. In my community, black people, there's apathy. You see it in polling. I just feel like a lot of people, again, ask that question, where are you now? You promised us a lot of things just as a country. I'm not even just putting this on the government everywhere from business to our neighbors. Everyone promised that it would be a new day and it is not a new day. And we're still battling. We've gone even further back. So, again, to the to the listener, I want to ask, where are you now? Where are you right now and what are you doing to ensure that? The promise that was, well, what was said at the beginning of this country, the promise of, you know, life and liberty and all that, the pursuit of happiness. What are you doing to ensure that for people who don't look like you, people who look like me, for black people, for people, Latinos, for immigrants? What are you doing? And, and particularly when it comes to black people, again, I believe in the law of sowing and reaping. People can't build your country. Black people can't build your country for 400 years through slavery and brutality and, and, and the stealing of everything from us. And then we get nothing in return. I feel like people's patience, it's running thin. And so, again, I'm going to ask 
to the listener, where are you now and what are you doing? So from that, I just want to say thank you for listening. And uh, again, subscribe if you can. Well, I know you can. Well, please subscribe. Um, We're just trying to reach as many people as possible. Um, And so I always say this on a podcast and I'll say it here. Um, There's nothing wrong with being upset because passion only means one thing, that you're still alive. God bless.